Welcome to Fix It. I'm your host, Jeff Probst. This is the Fix It show for do-it-yourselfers. If you fancy yourself a weekend warrior or you like to futz around the house, chances are you're going to learn something on this show that will help you with those projects. On today's show, as you can see back here in our ballroom, we've assembled a makeshift a couple of walls and we have four wonderful volunteers. We're going to take you through the whole the whole basics, really a 101 of painting, show you everything from what types of paint to use in what rooms, how to mask and which brushes to use. It will be a learning experience, I guarantee you. We're also going to go to Massachusetts and check out a brand new 200 year old home. This is a home that was built as an exact replica of a home that was made in, in 1704. We'll also show you some of the tools from that era and cover the evolution of tools. It's pretty interesting how many tools haven't changed at all and some that have changed uh, greatly. But first up, I'm going to wander over here and introduce you to the woman who, who guides us through this maze of hammers and nails every day, Kat Ryman. We're going to take on uh, well, this is something actually, Kat, that's very popular this time of year. Screen doors getting a lot of use, kids running through them. In this case, it looks like, I don't know, a dog or something. Could be might, a very big dog, like maybe one of mine. This. <laughs> this is the first thing we're going to take off of. What's the, when it comes to replacing a screen door, what do you want to do first? The first thing, get it off the track and get it away from the regular door and then lay it down flat. So if you help me out, we're going to okay. lay this down flat. Okay. Is it easy to uh, is it easy to take off the hinges? As a matter of fact, it's uh, spring loaded, so it's a pop up and pull out. So yeah, it's extremely easy to All do right. that. Once you have it on a flat surface, next step. Right, you begin your project, and what we have to do is clear this away, this screening away. And see this black here? This is a plastic molding that is sitting in a groove, and that's what holds the screening in. So you need to take that out, but while you're taking it out, take a close look at it to make sure it's in good shape, not weathered or broken. See how nice and flexible that okay. is? So what you're going to do is you're going to take it out, you're going to check it along the way, and you're going to make sure that everything is okay, because if you need to get a new one of these, you have to bring it with you because they come in different lengths. Okay, so you basically, if it's pliable and doesn't feel real rough or, or tethered, you're okay. Use it again. All right. When it comes to the screen, there's a couple of different ways you can buy this screen. Yeah, you can buy screening in a roll or you can buy it in sheet pieces. And uh, when you have dogs that weigh 4,000 pounds, you buy them in roll. Which you do. Yes, yes. I do. So this is it. You can also buy it in a sheet. You want to make sure you buy it, I guess, a little larger than the door. It's always going to be three inches probably on either side, top, bottom, left, and right. It's going to be about three inches bigger. Yeah, because you have to accommodate this groove. This is where this molding goes in. What does this run? Uh, about a dollar a foot, whether it's a sheet or a roll. Okay, so no, no, no better way to go as far as buying it, how to buy it. Uh, no, yeah, right. I mean, that's preference and how often you do it. When you get back, you roll this out. Yeah. Is it, this is really sort of a two-person job. You can use a two-person job. I mean, the frequency in which I do it, it seems like every other day. Um, one person is fine, but if you have two people, it goes a lot quicker. All right, so you lay it out evenly over. Right, you lay it out evenly over. In. Take a pull on that corner over there. Okay. How tight do you want a screen door when you get it done? When you start putting in your rubber molding again, you want it just tight enough like a well-made bed. Because if you tighten it too much, this is an aluminum it's frame and it's going to bow and diamond. Yeah. All right. You have two tools in your hand. Yeah, I do. One's for you. Okay. That's a spline. All right. That is actually a tool for screening. Okay. Real, that, is, is this a necessary tool, do you think? Um, you know, I'll tell you what, you can use one. It does put it nicely into the groove. However, I started out with a screwdriver because I tuck it in. Then I use the spline to get it into the groove nicely. Hmm. Okay. So you don't have to go out. You can use a screwdriver, but it's all up to you. Where are you picking any place in particular to start? Does I it usually start just tucking in so I get a nice groove in my corners. Okay. I don't, you don't pull this too tight because you can stretch it. So I just start tucking it in my corners and then once my corners are tucked in, I go on and start to do the long lengths of the door. How long is this? Is this pretty typical of how long it should take? 15, 20 minutes? Uh, actually do the I process? would even say less. If you've got two hands, I would even definitely say less. What is this on a, you like to talk about patience level and skill level as I feel like we're doing a dance here. Patience level, where does this fall? Um, for my dogs, the patience level is a 10. But I mean, just to do this, it's about a 2. All right, and skill level looks about the same. About the same, pretty Any much. recommendation on music? Kind of, sometimes music helps you do a project. Well, since I'm going to be really unnerved, I need yeah. something mellow, a little mellow, okay. you know? So what's mellow? Steely Dan? A little, Steely Dan, uh, I right. love that Steely some, Dan. Some, some, okay. Little peg. A little music <laughs> recommendation from Kat Ryman, our in-house expert. That's the first project of the day. When we come back, we're going out to Massachusetts, where they built an amazing home. This is an exact replica of a home that was built in 1704. It's a brand new 200 year old home. We'll show you that as Fix It continues right after this.
little tears that you had when you tucked it in and those right. all go away. You're all those little out. tears or anything that you might have done while you were doing it. One well. last good tip that you were mentioning during the break, which is you can take your old screen and use it out in the garden. You sure can. You can use it around pots and you can use it in pot for potting so the dirt doesn't come out of your plants. Great. One last thing, Kat. Where'd you get that shirt? Um, it's from an artist friend of mine, thank you. All right, now normally when you think about new homes, you think all the modern, modern amenities and great style and luxury, but that's not always the case. When home renovator Carolyn Sly went to build a new home, she built one that was an exact replica of a home built in 1704. Take a look at this. If you lived in Massachusetts in the 1700s, the landscape would have been dotted with homes like this one. This house looks very much like one which was built in 1704 in southeastern Massachusetts, but it actually was built from 1980 to 1986. My name is Caroline Sly, and I restore antique houses and build new ones with antique tools. Susan McGowan is a historian who lives in the house Carolyn built. You know, when you see something that speaks to you and you think it should be a part of your life, well, this house um, spoke to me. I felt as if I adopted it. It's a collaboration, this house and the owner. It needs, it needs me, I need it. Someone asked me once when I was having a physical if I had a Stairmaster because my cardiovascular was good. And I said, no, I just carry wood from the cellar uh, daily in arm loads, and that's my exercise. The house itself is nothing more than living space organized around the chimney. And the rest of the house was really not defined except by the pocket of the builder. You could have as much living space around the chimney as you could afford to build. This would be known as the hall or the kitchen or that cooking fireplace. Come into the parlor, which is where you'd want to be if you were visiting me. This is the biggest room in the house. And it is the lightest also. When I want it to be warm, I light the fire. But the fire would not be lighted unless someone was using the room. This is a, that's the way it was. You didn't light a fire and leave it. It was lighted uh, when you were expecting the use of the room. And the ceiling is, as you see, not very far uh, above us. It's very low. And that was probably partly because of ease of heating in an ordinary house such as this is, there would be no heat upstairs. And uh, you piled on the blankets, or you took someone to bed with you. During the winter, no one took a bath, because it was so cold and there were no tubs. So this is an early 20th century tub that delights the body. In the 18th century, every surface that was shaped had to be done this way by hand planes. This is exactly the process that was used to make the walls of the old kitchen. This plane makes a bead. It's a rounded shape. Every pass of the plane makes it a little bit rounder here and also at the, down in the groove. You can see it already almost finished at the end. We're looking at the south-facing wall, which is, in effect, the solar collector, has the greatest number of windows, letting in the most light. The windows are much smaller than today's window because of the cost of glass. It's believable as an 18th century house. I think you could almost be um, mesmerized by it and believe you're back in the 18th century when you're in the house, if you ignore the light outlets. And the dishwasher. Who says they don't make them like they used to? Great old house. It was a beautiful house. Did you see those wide plank floors? Yeah, nice. Yeah. They're blending a little of the old with a little of the new. She mentioned the dishwasher, and I think there are some other modern appliances down there. One thing that you learn from that story, really, I think, is that new is not necessarily the best. Right. You're yeah. exactly right. We've assembled some tools, some of which are from the 18th century that were probably used to build homes like that. Mm -hmm. And then we have their contemporary gadgets, really, in, right. many, in many cases. Exactly. Take us through some of these. Well, let's start with the hammer, because the hammer has not made dress leaps and bounds. Basically the hammer looks and has the same shape as it did 200 years ago. Um, however, each tool back then was made to fit a specific person. So what has happened in, in essence is the fact that this hammer has the same handle as today's handle except it's in wood and the head is still the same. There's not the balance though. Yeah, it's There's very top-heavy. I picked it up. You're right. So these were a personal a They personal were personally tool. made tools for each individual person. The contemporary person. gadget of the 20th century. And, and that's exactly what this thing is. This is just a gadget. It's a nut cracker and a hammer put together. I mean, it's $15 worth of nothing. There's no balance to it. There's no real handle. 
nothing works for this on me. What, do you, what do you prefer when it comes to a hammer? I prefer a hammer hammer. Now this is a hammer hammer. It's got a beautiful weight, it's got a nice balance, it's got a good grip, okay? And it's gonna last for a long time and it's the same price as the gadget. Is this your personal hammer? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. What, what's with the tape? I'm very colorful. Okay, oh, very colorful. all right, wrenches. Okay. Same thing, wrenches haven't changed a lot. Wrenches have, no, wrenches have not changed a lot. Basically the shape of a wrench, front and back, have, are the same, okay? It's all the same. However, this is specific to something. This was made for a carriage. Only mm. one carriage. Wow. You couldn't share this tool. You can go to a next carriage and use it on the other carriage. One thing it's used for and that's all. Okay, but the wrench again, it hasn't made any leaps and bounds. Then, what happened in the Industrial Revolution, okay, you came up with mass-produced adjustable mm. wrenches. Now, see, you see the same shape. However, now you have a swivel head and you can hit many different sizes. This bolts. was revolutionary at the time. Oh, yeah, this was fantastic. This was the rave. This was terrific. All right. But what happens is you still don't, you know, you I'm still not in. too happy yeah. with that, okay? The, the gadget of today's wrench is terrific. Check this thing out. It's just... It's, not, the I'm not happy. One. The six in one. The this six is $9.99 for payments. Oh, yeah. nine nine, And you can, with the, the other knives things that you can get on TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But <laughs> really, this has been, the, the Crescent Wrench has been a standard for, Terrific. for a long time. Yeah, and you can get that in various sizes, pay the same amount of money, and have just a better tool. It's adjustable. It'll fit just as many heads as the gadget, and it works much nicer. All right. Something that has changed quite a bit is the way we measure things. Exactly. And what we're measuring here, this was a carpenter's ruler okay this only goes to two feet that's it very then limiting. you very limiting it's nicely in the pocket though. it does but it was extremely limiting okay then what happened is they picked up something well they need more space they need to do a little bit more distance and they did this which and is a good idea at the time it's a fantastic idea however it's made out of cloth which means I always need someone to help me or somebody to be on the other end or something okay but this one goes to about four feet now okay then we have Today's ruler and today's pull-out ruler. It's okay. rigid and has a lock. So you could do this by yourself. Right. And this is what you prefer? Right. I prefer this because, look, I'm locked in. I can walk anywhere, do anything, and, and just I don't need anybody's help. But before we end the segment, we have to talk about the gadget of this. Because, I know you like that. Yeah. This is, this is a, Take a look at this. This is like a space-age <laughs> toy. And what do you turn on here? Yeah, push down there. Okay, and that kind of lights it up. Now point it at something. All right, I'll point and it. I'll hold point it hold it down right. for a few seconds. Okay. Okay, once you hold that down for a few seconds, it will measure distance there from the is. front of this to whatever distance you're you're going but you to. You have no idea what you're measuring in it. It's forty dollars worth of gas. This is one of those things that Dave Diner, our floor <laughs> manager, would pull out and just go, let me get that for you. Let me just uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're you're about eight and a half. Yeah, something like that. Right, Dave? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> No, no. So the thing, the thing, great, great uh, right. demonstration of how tools have evolved. And it, they, they have come a long way. However, steer clear of the gadgets. Stay with your good standard basic tools. Great. Thanks, Kat. You're welcome. Well, when we come back, finally, our painters are in the ballroom. They are anxiously awaiting you, Kat. Yeah, they are. To give them some tips. Yeah, they are. Uh, when we come back, we'll join them back there for more Fix It right after this. Welcome back to Fix It. Now, in our last segment, we were talking about the evolution of tools from the 18th century to the 20th century, and one in particular that I'm not sure I explained well enough. Take a look at this, Dante. This is an electronic tape measure. You turn it on, and then I'm going to measure how far we are away from our family of friends who is going to paint over there. And there it is. Dante, 22 feet and uh, 6 inches, which is, uh, is, that's about right, actually, isn't it? I don't know if these things work, but they're just loads of fun to sit around and point and do things like this. All right, painting. The FX Ballroom has perhaps one of the neatest, is one of the neatest sets you're going to see anywhere on any television show. The painting in, is, in here is terrific. Now we're not going to show you how to get quite that detailed today, but Kat is going to take us through the basics and we have a few folks to help us out. Guys, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Mona. Mona. Hi, I'm Karen. Karen. Hi, I'm Crystal. Crystal. Hi, I'm Stacy. Mona and Stacy, mother and daughter right. and friends. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys done much painting before? A little bit. Oh, yeah. Bit. yeah. So looking for there's a few tips here that hopefully will will make the next job a little easier and, and not so messy. Yeah. Kat, get us started. What were they doing when we walked in here? What they were doing when we we walked in was they were actually taping the moldings of the door frames, the window frames, whatever you don't want to paint with wall paint. And what they've done is they actually had a couple of short pieces, and I recommend more of a long piece or a single piece for what you're doing. But they're using painter's tape, and what painter's tape is is it's a less sticky paint uh, tape. So when you peel it off, 
it doesn't take off the paint. All right, guys, you're going to continue masking exactly. so that we can get so to painting. You guys want to come All back right, and go for that. The here. next thing we want to talk about is the type of paint. Right. You have enamel paint and you have latex paint. Enamel paint is an oil-based paint that is used in rooms that either are cleaned a lot or have a lot of moisture. A latex paint is used in your living rooms, your bedrooms, your dining rooms, and it comes in flat. It comes in semi-gloss. Then again, you know what I mean? So either one, you can get different shines. Okay. Brushes. A variety of brushes to choose from. What do you like? Okay. The first thing you have for the big job on the walls is you have your paint pans here and we have rollers all ready to go. And then you have a, a real assortment of brushes and the first thing I want to talk about is actually your cutting brush. And what a cutting brush does is as follows. And these are going to be my cutters. So I have the uh, cutting brush has a real angle to it. Yes it does. I'm glad you noticed that because there's a purpose for this and I'm going to show you as soon as okay. I get to the wall. Okay, ladies, here's your paint. And what you're doing is called cutting. Exactly. Would you dip in? Okay. And what it's doing is it's called cutting. And cutting is working or outlining the area around your windows and doors. Very good. Let's turn that sideways like this. And that's the cutting motion right there. You see that sideways angle? Sure. And that's why it's called cutting because what you're doing is you're trying to get away from the windows and doors. Now, I've been painting for so long, I don't use tape. Of course you don't. And I can cut around things, and that's what it means, cut around the windows and doors, because you're going to paint this either a different color or a different gloss. Okay. okay? And then you come back in with the roller, okay, and you have the overlap. Right. And that, right. that's what a roller does. That comes and does the big base job of the wall. Mona, a little more paint, okay? Don't, don't, be, <laughs> don't frugal be skimpy. with it. Don't All be right. skimpy. So, uh, what, now, guys, can you, uh, are we done over here? Are we masked off? Yeah, I think they're, okay. they're pretty Okay, great. Hang good. tight, because we're going to use you for this uh, rolling thing. Okay. Once, once we've cut in, and you want to cut enough distance that you right. can roll over They're going to cut, see what they have here, and I'll tell you why. They've got a nice two or three inch gap between the molding, and I'll use it back here so they can keep working. They've got a gap now of paint that they roll, put on, they That's paint great. it on, so then the roller can come back sure. and do its job and you without don't have to hitting. Rub up, right, rub get up the against the molding, rub up against stuff you don't want that color. You paint guys on. ready to roll? You this is really the fun part. The technique, yeah, well, the rolling is the best because, first of all, you get sprinkled on in the whole nine yards. So you get dirty, so it's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, what you're going to do is you can pick yours up but and with follow those me nifty along. FX jackets they have on. I'm are telling you, they jackets. they're posh. They're, they're, posh, they're pretty nice. Okay. You. What you want to do is you're going to just gently, gently, and then you're going to come back up. And you want to get paint almost all the way around. And if you don't, I wouldn't worry about it because as the brush rolls on the wall, but you also want to make sure you don't dip. Kat, is that cutting okay? Because Mona and Karen have moved on. Yeah, actually, that's a pretty decent good. job all for right. first time cutters. So we don't have a lot of paint on here, which is pretty good. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take that, hold it nice and steady, come here to your wall, and you can start over here. You can start halfway. You're going to go up and down. Let's go with the strokes here, up and down. And you're going to press a little bit, okay? If you see this choppiness, that's okay. Just let's get the brush started, and then you can turn around and re dip in your pan. Now so you go re dip. And then it, just go over that again. It looks like uh, Stacy has more paint on hers and right. it's going on a little. Exactly. Because what we're going to have to do here is, is it crystal? Mm -hmm. yes. You're going to have to get crystals to flip. See? There you go. Now you got it flipped around. And press a little harder. You need a little bit of firmness. All right. And remember always to get that edge off. Okay? Any technique when it comes to actually putting the roller on? Because I've always heard, do a W, do a V. No, no. Yeah, you're making the alphabet on my walls. <laughs> That's what I no. heard. What you want to do is exactly what I showed the girls. You want to make it an up and down motion, okay. and as soon as you need to move over, you just angle the roller a little bit, and you keep going up and down. And they're doing a splendid job. Do you see any lines? In your W and V, you're going to see those lines when they draw. <laughs> it, it looks great, and so do the jackets. Okay, come over and tell me about... The guys, keep going. You're doing, you're doing a great job. Don't and skimp I'm, on paint. I just got a new apartment, so you can come over later and show us about the, uh, the rest of these brushes, okay. because there's all kinds yeah. of these things. Again, do they work? Again, gadgets. Yeah. These things are gadgets, and people use them because the ceiling are usually different than your walls and again it's a cutting tool these are cutting tools but I just I can't get a grip on them they make sometimes a very flat press mark I'm Compare not happy. nylon and natural bristles okay nylon versus natural the nylon brush will lay a heavier uh, a heavier bristle mark the natural will lay a lighter smoother bristle mark one thing I wonder about these uh, electric sort of big machine rollers that you have to plug in the tubing and put the paint in here. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty heavy duty. That's pretty heavy duty. And every time you have to go to change your paint, you've got to clean this, you've got to clean the tubing, you've got to clean your, your roller. If you're not painting on a professional level, get your regular, regular Last roller. Last tip. I saw you doing something in here. You were pounding a screw or a nail in here to make holes. What yeah. is that about? That's because you're very messy, and I got to do this. And every time I have you paint, there's paint all over everything. 
what I've just done is I've nailed some holes right here in the lip of the pan. Yeah, you're actually, let's show this, you're actually putting them inside yes. this area. Exactly. And see, so, do you know what happened? You just drip the paint and it went and right in the hole right and back, back in the can. Yeah. So this way, that stops it from coming outside the can. This and is when you take the brush and, exactly. and wipe. Great tips. How does it look? This looks great, actually. They're doing fantastic. You're doing nice. Get up real close to that edge mark there and you're, you're almost there. By it's the way, horrific. Crystal and uh, Mona, in case you're wondering, you're exactly seven feet, six inches away from me. <laughs> All right, when we return, we'll finish up our painting segment. And we will also uh, give you some tips on keeping your home smelling clean and fresh as Fix It continues after this. Where'd my Welcome back to Fix It. Let's check back in with our painters, see how they're doing back there. Crystal, Mona, Stacy, and Karen. Oh, ooh, hey, they're peeling off the masking. That is great. That looks good. They did a good job. Can we pull out a little wider and see, see how much of the wall they painted? That looks really good. That is a great tip because if you take the time to do that off the top, exactly. that's going to save you a lot of time. All right, you have one quick tip here at the end, which yes, is if you have a bad smell, this is a good way to fix it, I exactly. guess. Exactly. A little sugar. Right, a little sugar and a little cinnamon in a warm oven. And that's exactly where I'm going with this pan as soon as I do this. This is the kind of thing if you've had people over for dinner and maybe you cooked fish or something like that and it's right. got an odor. Right. And what What's, you're going to do? What do you put the oven? What do you set it to? Warm. And you leave it ajar. Very and then what nice. happens is it. It Swaps fills the, the room. <laughs> We're filling it right now. That's all for a fix it. Remember, if it's broke, yeah, fix it. See you next time. <laughs>